All right. Okay, so uh, let's begin this lecture. So uh, uh, for to understand this lecture, uh, we had two prerequisite lectures before uh, where we had, uh, you know, discussed about the basic uh, uh, SAR data and some of the introductions to SAR technology. So today we are going to talk about uh, SAR data processing and analysis. We'll keep it uh, very basic. So uh, today I will try to tell you how to access data and stuff like that. So we'll keep it very ba basic and uh, and in the coming lectures, we will go uh, in detail in multiple applications. So today we are only focusing on how to deal with SAR data and what application uh, we, we can use. Right. OK, so let's begin. And, and, uh, for today's objectives, we will understand uh, Sentinel-1 SAR data. Uh, there are many other SAR data, but today we are only working with Sentinel-1 uh, because Sentinel is free data. And uh, we will also try to do some image uh, using some tools. And then we will try to do a simple analysis on the imagery of SAR. So uh, what we need is to have some Sentinel-1 back background uh, we I will show you that uh, in uh, in few seconds or few minutes the how to access the data and display the data and then how to do the pre-processing and some analysis so let's start with the background as as we have discussed before that there are multiple types of uh, SAR data as you can see in this table also there are three types of SAR uh, sensors radar sat Sentinel-1 or uh, RI set. So, but we will work with Sentinel-1 and, and uh, here are some of the details for Sentinel-1 as we have discussed these details before, but I just want to go through uh, a little bit. We will work with C-band in Sentinel-1 and uh, we will have VV and VH as polarization or HH and HV. And uh, SAR resolution is about uh, 20 meters and uh, the swath width is about 250 kilometers in uh, IWS mode uh, and it's descending but uh, uh, and the launching time is 2014 so it's operational since 2014 and there was another sentinel satellite uh, which was launched uh, at I think uh, just after two years uh, of the uh, sentinel 1a which we call sentinel 1b so, uh, including that, the revisit time uh, comes up to six days. So, uh, it's a very good uh, temporal resolution. All right. So, uh, there are multiple acquisition modes uh, in the Sentinel, uh, uh, Sentinel uh, operations, which they use to uh, acquire the data. The first one is extra wide swath, which uh, is mostly used in oceans and coastal applications. And the stripe mode is a special order only, uh, and it can be up to 80 kilometers, and uh, a spatial resolution is five meter. Wave mode is for, uh, also for oceans, and the interferometric wide swath uh, is up to uh, 250 kilometers and uh, 20 meter resolution, and it's uh, used for land routine collection. All right, so here are two links uh, to how we can access the Sentinel-1 data. The first one is Alaska SAR facility and the second one is the European Space Agency portal. So you can access these two links uh, to download the data. Oh, there is another one. Sorry, I forgot to mention here. Uh, there is another uh, link that is called uh, SCI Hub. Let me write it down in the chat box. Oh. If you guys want to, oops, I don't know if I can. Uh, all right, I, I will do that at the end of the lecture. I will write the uh, link. Or maybe hey. there is a, um, hello? All right, so there is a link where I, I will show how to access the data from uh, SCI. All right, so there are different types of uh, uh, product in Sentinel. Uh, range should be GRD anyway. Ground range detected. The 
and third one is OCN. So uh, in this uh, uh, tutorial or in this uh, lecture, we will use the ground range detected one, and uh, and I will show you uh, very soon how to download that one or how to access that one. Oh, uh, there is one more thing in SLC. You will have a phase. Uh, uh, phase information which you won't have in uh, ground range detection. so now we will go to the sentinel one toolbox the toolbox that we will use to uh, to uh, to analyze or or to pre-process the sentinel one data it is uh, a free software a free application that you can use uh, to uh, deal with radar images from sentinel one and other satellites it's very useful and it's freely available on this uh, link that is mentioned on the screen. So this tool includes calibration, speckle noise, terrain correction, mosaic production, uh, polarimetry, interferometry, and some classification. Some of the uh, uh, some of the application or tools we will use today, uh, like calibration, we will also do speckle noise, and uh, probably we will do some classification also. Right. So here is uh, the link that how to uh, access the Sentinel-1 data. This is a short video. Uh, so we will check that uh, and let me know if you can see the video. Can you guys see the video? Yes. Okay. All right, let me make it a bigger, okay. I hope you can hear the audio also. No, no, sound. no, no, no sound. So I will just explain it, okay? Mm, okay. All right. Okay, so on the Google, you just need to uh, write Copernicus Data Hub. Uh, that is a website and it can be easily accessible. And you go there and uh, you go for the uh, open hub. Yes. Uh, here you will see this window. And But uh, going forward, you need to have an account here for Copernicus uh, Data Hub. So first, uh, what I will do is uh, I will, uh, you know, register or I already have an account. So I will log in uh, so that I can access the data. Uh, you can simply sign up. It's a simple process. And after that, you will be able to log in and then get the data. All right, so now I am logged in. So now I need to uh, check which area I would like to get the data for. So there are two ways. Uh, uh, one simple way is that I will just select the data with, uh, with this tool here. I will select the area where I want to have the uh, Sentinel-1 uh, product images. Then go in the details and put in your details what you want. Uh, order, this is descending or ascending. I said I want ascending. So, so and then uh, you have to enter the sensing period, like what in what time you want the data. So let's say I want from November 2020 to, let's say, December 25. Okay, so, yes, okay, so... The Sentinel-1. You can also download Sentinel-2 data from here, but right now we will download Sentinel-1. So the platform is S1A or, or Sentinel-1B. So I say like selected the Sentinel-1A, and here we have three uh, product types as I dis as I discussed. So we will use the GRD one here. Or okay, I use the SLC one. Okay, but you can also use the GRD. But uh, in this, uh, we will use the GRD in this example. So I've already downloaded the GID one. So here are the polarization and the sensor mode. So you can choose either one. Uh, of course, uh, have different types of data. So, uh, and then I will save this information and then they will show me uh, the available data. So here you can say that, uh, see the, uh, Information is saved. Now I will search for the data and all the images will show up on the screen very soon. But it's going, going.
hopefully it will come soon okay here uh, now we see all the, the available images during the time that we have uh, uh, added into this into the detail Oops. so there are many images so you can choose which swath uh, you want uh, which images uh, image you want to download you can also check their details uh, you have to click the one you want to uh, download it will highlight and then you can check for the details uh, here is the outlook image and the area that you want to uh, download and there uh, uh, here below is a summary uh, which will give you the details of uh, all the details of the uh, of the image or the scene the size very big size for the slc but GRD will be less sized than that the, uh, and the product details so all of them and then at the end once you are done with checking the details you can download by this download button and once you hit it the uh, product will start downloading here so I've already downloaded it, so uh, let's just skip it. And then uh, once you're done, then you will start using your data. So this is how we will uh, go for the data. And uh, so at this point, we we have our uh, uh, we have our uh, Sentinel One data. So let's see what we can do with that. All right. So uh, so Snap that Sentinel application application uh, platform it will look like that once you download it and uh, then you go to the file and then uh, add the image uh, once you uh, uploaded the image into this uh, uh, tool it will show like here uh, as you can see in the red uh, red arrow so it will uh, tell you the name and stuff like that so I told you I have a GR I had a GRD uh, image so we will use that so once you click that arrow, the small arrow, uh, you will see the details for this one, like metadata, vector data, and stuff like that. And in bands, you will see which bands do we have for this data. First of all, we will check what we can see in the metadata. When you click the abstract metadata, you will see all the details for this uh, product. So the image you have uh, uploaded into this uh, platform or a tool, you will see all the details for this. As we can see here, the product, the product type and mission and antenna and everything. So you can go ahead and check all the details uh, if you want to. All right. So next, we will click on the bands and see what bands we have. We will have amplitude and intensity. Uh, these things we have already discussed before. So we normally uh, open the amplitude image here. Uh, we have VH and VV polarization. So here I uh, will, when I double click the amplitude, it will start creating an image and you will see a notification box here like that. It might take a little bit of time depending on your computer uh, processor or depending on what, how good your computer is. So I use these uh, uh, screenshots because my computer is not that good. I'm just using a simple MacBook. So that's why I created uh, these uh, screenshots in order to save some time so once the image is created it will show like look like that so a very beautiful star image uh, uh, in your screen and it will look like that but the size will be very big here probably maybe one or two gigabytes of data here uh, of this one image so and what we can do here with is also we can add some RGB into this data to maybe understand a little bit better uh, just for our own convenience here uh, but once you right click on on this product you will see these details like uh, multiple options but you can select that uh, open rgb window so here uh, you have this rgb window channel and then once you click it it will look like this a bit more understandable uh, but it's your own choice some people do that some people don't so it's it's uh, uh, basically your choice and here we can also see in the in the lower part i'm not sure if you can see my mouse uh here is the area which we have selected uh, the image so uh, here you can also see from the earth view uh, or the world map view that uh, where are you or where is your image right now okay so uh, our image is open the data is open in the sentinel box now so 
So uh, here are the pixel information. So once you move your uh, cursor over this image, you will see different types of, uh, like not different type, you will see the uh, pixel values, uh, like where uh, each pixel will have a, uh, like a distinguished value for itself that you will see here. And, but uh, what we will look for uh, in those pixels is the uh, energy value, which we will uh, see later once we uh, we will, uh, you know, change uh, this image into dB values. Uh, right now it's not in the dB, so we will change the intensity into dB later and see the intensity values, which we will use for our analysis on this image. Right, so here the image is very big. So it will take a lot of time to process. So one way to, uh, you know, in, uh, increase the uh, processing time is to subset it. Uh, like normally, sometimes we don't need to work with all the image. There is some uh, area of interest that we want to work with. So what we can do is subset that area. Subset means like uh, cut that area of interest so that we can do our analysis on that. And it will be fairly easy uh, to process uh, for computer and it will be a bit faster than that. So once you click the subset option, uh, you will have a pop up here and it will have two options to subset. You, uh, this left and uh, right arrow, uh, left arrow uh, is select based on the image. You can just move from here wherever you want and you can just uh, you know select the area that you want to uh, subset however there is another way uh, like you can put coordinates uh, here uh, where you, uh, and use the coordinates to select the area so it's it's your choice both of you have both uh, you know uh, available options so you can choose whatever you want once you click ok you will have a subset and there is a new thing to see that you will have a new uh, new product here on number two like it's in the start it's called subset so the good thing and the beautiful thing about uh, a, a snap tool is that once you create a new product it will come up here with its own name whatever you do whatever uh, analysis or whatever action do you do do on this uh, on your product it will uh, come up with the name so we did subset the uh, image and it comes up as a subset here so now we will work on uh, work with this subset it will have the same data same uh, uh, not same data same information of data uh, the same polarization and stuff like that so here we will again choose the uh, amplitude of vv polarization and uh, it will look like that it's a smaller part and we can also see down here in the left corner that the white area was the real image and we subsetted the red part so red part is the uh, now the new area we will work okay all right now so in pre-processing the two main things we discussed in the the previous uh, lectures is the geometric and radiometric calibration so uh, calibration is important uh, because we want to have each pixel directly related to the backscatter of the surface which we discussed that is very important and it will also help us analyze uh, the image in a quantitative way and uh, it will also help uh, comparing those images in multiple sensors and different times so maybe there uh, some images are of different times so if we calibrate them it will be easy to compare them all right so let's see where is the option for calibration so you need to remember one thing that the product that you want to calibrate you have to select it like there are multiple uh, products here uh, listed you have to select the uh, just click the subset and then you open this radar uh, option and then for radiometric and then calibrate so so just re remember that you have to click otherwise it will you know do this calibration for the first product or the product which is previously selected. Just keep in mind that. Right, okay, so once we calibrate, we will see this pop-up box here. And you can also save your, uh, uh, your you know, uh, your images that uh, you are doing analysis on or pre-processing 
on. So here is the directory where you can choose your own way, like maybe in the computer, there is some special place you want to uh, save your data on. So you can uh, change it from here directly. Otherwise, uh, it will save in the default uh, folder. So uh, uh, this is the pop-up box. Okay, so once you run it, it will take some time and then it will pop up a new box that will uh, tell you that the processing is complete. As you can see here, here processing complete in 30 seconds and uh, 101 MB, uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this uh, was that the calibration is done and we now have a new product here the third one, the subset. So when you go, uh, when you move this uh, to the end, you will see at the end, there is a name with calibration, like here, the product, so that you can find that which uh, product is calibrated. So it's easy, very easy to find out uh, which product you have calibrated and uh, because of the name. Right, but you can also change the name according to your own choice. That is not a problem. All right. So once the calibration is done, it will look like that. And once we have calibrated, we will have the band value in sigma naught, VV and VH. So before it was like, oh, sorry. Uh, it was like that image. And now after the calibration, it looks like a bit darker. So why we have this darker image or, you know, this, uh, this is a speckle noise, actually. We have uh, learned about that in our previous lecture, lectures that uh, uh, there are some speckle noises which can be disturbing for some users to uh, process the data. Right, so now what we do is we we'll try to remove this speckle. So speckle is that grainy paper and uh, salt and paper effect you can see here, which is uh, not very looking very good. So some people are, you know, uh, most of people that they want to remove it. So there is, there are two ways I, uh, I have mentioned in the previous uh, lectures that uh, we can use speckle filters and or we can use multi-look. There are two options and both of them are available in this uh, Sentinel box. But uh, keep in mind that uh, removing speckle noise can also reduce the image resolution. We have also discussed this before. Uh, so the more speckle you remove, the more resolution you will lose. Uh, but we will see that uh, after removing the speckle, the image will look a bit more uh, beautiful. Right, so in this process, we will use multi-looking and uh, once you select the radar option and you go for the multi-looking and select it and this uh, box will pop up. So here, uh, these are input output parameters where you can change the name and change the directories. And there are other, there is other option called parameters. So here we can uh, change the number of range looks or azimuth looks. So keep in mind, the more number of looks we have, the less resolution we will have. So uh, it means like uh, this number of looks increases, the speckle noise will be more smoother and uh, the image quality will be degraded accordingly. So we have selected uh, six or six, you can choose it by your numbers. You can use any numbers. Uh, depending on your results, you can see and uh, what kind of results at what number you are getting your desired results. So I, I used six, six. Before it was like that. And now once we are done with that, it looks like this. And now we have a new subset here, the, the same subset, but it is uh, speckled. It is multi-looked, uh, the speckled, uh, noise is removed. So at the end, you will see the name will be different. So the, the size of window is a bit short, so that you cannot see the ending part of this uh, name, name of this image. Anyway, the image is looking a bit more better than before, uh, easy to understand the water and the other parts of the ground, which is mostly vegetation. Right, so now what we can do is, uh, we have to do the geometric, uh, calibration. So first we did the radiometric and now we will do the geometric calibration. So for that you go to the 
radar option, go for geometric terrain correction and range Doppler terrain correction. So what it will do, it will take it to the real, uh, uh, real orientation uh, on the Earth. Uh, so as we know, that radar image is not uh, exactly as same as the optical image. Uh, so this uh, range Doppler uh, terrain correction will change it into the real uh, orientation. So once we do that, uh, we will have uh, some options here, like the first uh, Pop-up box is the input output parameters. Well, we are, we, are, we we want to go to the processing parameters here. So the main thing, the important thing here is the digital elevation model. Here, the first option. It is necessary to do the uh, geometric correction. Uh, so there are multiple options. Like you can use the auto mode here, which is available in this tool, or if you have your own, you can also upload that one. So it's up to you. So once we do that, now we see that the orientation has been changed. So now this is the real, uh, like in the, the real orientation for this image. Uh, so now we can use it a, in a different way, and we can also put it on uh, uh, on Google Earth, and it will, uh, you know, match with the real coordinates. We will do that later. All right. So let's see what we have next. Okay, now, as I said before, that we will change these linear values to dB to uh, have this energy values uh, on the pixels. So what we do is uh, we will select the, um, the product that we want to change. We will uh, right click on it and it will look like that. So the lighter, the whiter, Parts have higher energy and the darker parts have lower energy. So one thing to remember that, uh, you know, this dark areas can be less darker or more darker based on the polarization we choose. So if you choose the v, VH, it will be different. Or if you choose the VV, it will be slightly different. So I guess in the VH, it will be slightly darker. Uh, I cannot show it here, uh, but uh, that's just my guess. All right. So once we do that, uh, then we will go for a analysis. Now we have our product ready for some analysis. We have uh, finished all the uh, pre-processing. All right. So uh, for the analysis, what I want to do is uh, I want to make this water prominent. So uh, there are two ways, like I can make Or, and then I can uh, uh, change the other areas in, into dark and the water can be light. Right now, uh, there is uh, uh, the pixel values of one are vegetation or others, and the water values are zero. So I want to change it to the uh, other one, other way, so that I, I can classify it easily. And here on the right, uh, on the left and uh, left uh, corner, uh, left lower corner, you can see that, uh, you know, the color manipulation. And you can also use it uh, for changing the values. Like here you can change uh, the energy values, uh, which can, uh, you know, appear different on this image. Like for example, if I move this white, uh, this white arrow to, more right side, uh, the bright areas will appear more brighter. So this way, you know, you can uh, change uh, change it a little bit to have a desired result. So it's up to you. And also you can see here the values of intensity and maximum values or uh, minimum values. So, but uh, I want to do it uh, using a band math, which is a bit easier to do. So once you click the band math, uh, you will have this pop-up menu. And here you can add the band math expressions. And once I click there, uh, I have data sources. So here, and then uh, I will select the source where I want to do this uh, expression. So uh, the expression is written here, which, uh, which means that I want to change uh, the uh, the brighter values into darker values and the darker values into brighter values. So once I click it, it will look like that. 
So now it looks a bit, uh, you know, uh, more more good. I like. I mean, I like it. It's it's more easy to see now where is the water, and we can easily identify it. But it's your own preference, actually. So uh, all the wide areas now uh, represent the open water, and the pixel values are one. And the rest of it is uh, vegetation and other uh, ground values. All right. Okay. Now I want to do a bit of classification on that, uh, which I can do it uh, on this color manipulation uh, area. Here, once I uh, click the table, I can change the colors here. Before it, the colors were, uh, I didn't take that screenshot, before the colors were like white and gray and black. So now I have changed it to green, green, and uh, blue. So here, uh, you know, the, fifth, uh, the 255 is the highest value of the pixel, which I have changed it to uh, uh, blue so that I can see the water. And the rest of values, I change it to uh, green so that I can see where the vegetation and stuff. So here you can do multiple operations to do the analysis. So this is is just a simple analysis to uh, classify water and land. Uh, in this case, it's vegetation. So, but you can do much more classification based on your requirements, and you can, you know, do a lot of stuff here. Right. So, uh, I guess that was it for analysis. Do for just just a one last But in the coming lectures, we will do in-depth, uh, you know, analysis for, for uh, other applications. We will go into more details to see how uh, we can do that. But right now, uh, today's lecture was only about uh, just the basics. So I think that is it for today. And thank you. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask.